Hi, and uh, welcome to the session Entering the U.S. Market in the Time of Pandemic. My name is Karina Sotnik. I'm a Director of Business Incubation and Accelerator Programs at the University City Science Center, located in Philadelphia, between New York and uh, Washington, D.C., um, in the U.S. Science Center is connected to 30-plus universities in three states and is the center of a local ecosystem. And we have a global soft lending program, so I am speaking to you with the practical knowledge that I've learned through that program. Um, so why expand globally to begin with? Well, there are plenty of reasons to do it. And uh, according to the recent survey of 166 CFOs of mid-market companies, these are the reasons that they cited um, to capture a market share outside of your home market, to expand your sales presence, to diversify your investments, um, ability to acquire top talent outside of your um, market, um, add an employee in the country if you already added a customer. All those are very valid reasons why you would consider growing globally. But why do it in a time of pandemic and how does that affect your plans? Well, according to the same survey, what was interesting is that the same CFO said that they did not uh, put on hold plans for expansion, that they're actually planning to go ahead with their expansion globally. 40% said that, over 40%. 37% did say that they're putting it currently on hold. But what was interesting, 12% said that they did not consider expanding globally before the pandemic, but now they're actually going ahead with those plans. And if you look at the current situation, so COVID affected every market, but it did not affect every market equally. And there are some opportunities to see um, maybe some markets will not recoil and actually will start expanding um, even during the pandemic. So you want to take advantage of that. Um, that might affect actually your bottom line and your um, growth and scaling plans in the future. For companies from a smaller market like Israel or Sweden or South Korea, you need to start thinking of expanding globally from the beginning because your market is just not enough for your company to scale. Um, also, if we look at the way we're working right now and we do our business development, doing business development um, over Zoom or other platforms remotely is becoming a norm. And you, we might as well take advantage of that. My suggestion, though, will be to look at the plans to expand globally and take a very agile approach. Look at one market at a time. Don't try to do it to too many countries. And uh, that way you can scale back quickly if that plan doesn't work. Also, when I work with companies on uh, um, their global expansion, what I always say is you don't know what you don't know. And it becomes sort of a, an interesting um, way of uncovering what you don't know. And uh, that helps you put together a roadmap, a plan for expansion. And that plan in turn will help you budget for it monetarily, but also in terms of human resources. So when you consider going um, abroad and expanding internationally, I outlined five areas that you really need to look deeper and dive deeper to, um, to sort of create that roadmap. And those five areas are location, legal and tax implications, operational issues, fundraising, if that's in your plans, and also very industry-specific issues that we will address in a second. So if you look at the um, geographical locations, um, a lot of people know sort of the centers, the hubs that we're familiar with. Uh, people know maybe Silicon Valley, they maybe know New York, but there are plenty of other areas that might be more beneficial for you to consider. And so when you look at the location, don't look at sort of what I call the usual suspects, but look at what is it that you, that you need for your company's successful growth. You need access to talent. You need to be in the industry where your company industry is. You need to consider cost of living. Um, you need to look at the overall supportive uh, infrastructure and the ecosystem. 
Um, so one example I like to give is on the East Coast, you know, you might want to think of New York or Boston, but if you look, um, you might want to consider uh, rent cost um, and the cost of living and uh, compare that to other cities on the East Coast and also look at um, sort of uh, very practical things. Uh, how close is the international airport, um, the train station in the city? How quickly can you get from the city to a considerable size of the population of that country? Um, so, for example, in Philadelphia, we're within five hours of you flying to the West Coast or to Europe. Um, so for European companies, that becomes uh, advantageous. For Asian companies, they might consider West Coast, unless they want to be an equal distance also to Europe. Then East Coast becomes a consideration. Um, so look at, uh, into those factors um, when you're considering the location. Um, with the legal considerations, there is a plethora of things to consider. But when you're looking at whether to open sort of a physical structure, a physical office in the country or virtual, um, you need to start thinking, uh, would that be your U.S. head office of your company? Um, or is it just a first location? Um, you need to look at the, uh, where is the best ecosystem for, for that um, expansion? Um, consider immigration laws, whether you want to import your key people into the country or hire locally. Um, there are other business uh, and legal considerations, so IP protection, and whether you have a, a US IP protection, or would you license UIP from your country to this new entity in the US. Um, you also look, uh, need to look into the corporate structure and how to structure this um, sort of a daughter company within the country and what would be the relationship with the existing parent um, company in your uh, country. Um, tax considerations become a, a, actually a key consideration. Um, and um, movement of funds, we will touch on it a little later. So this is just the touch points to consider when you look into establishing office in other country. Um, Operational considerations, well, there are also plenty of those, right? So you need to start looking into um, international banking. That's not a, a very trivial thing to do. And the movement of funds, sometimes that becomes a very, um, you know, considerable headache. So you really need to plan for that. Um, when you're looking in uh, opening an office, look for places that provide you um, innovation zone privileges, maybe some tax deferment or even abatements, um, R&D credits, uh, and how to take advantage of those, that becomes a serious consideration for the office as well. Look into the hiring strategy and learn the legal implications of hiring in that country. Um, but also learn um, how to legally hire. Um, for example, what kind of questions not to ask on the interview, because that might actually have legal implications as well. So look into the local hiring practices um, and look at the access of talent. Uh, you want to have uh, maybe a close um, locale to academia, so you have access to talent or to industry. So look into those when you consider where to open the office. Um, office location becomes important, um, but also consider calculating your business insurance when you're opening the office. Is there a lab or just an office space that you need? Um, look obviously into supply chain, uh, logistics, distribution, um, and that's where the um, proximity to airport or train station becomes sometimes really important. Um, if you decide to fundraise in the United States or in other markets, um, there are um, multiple things to think through. Um, first of all, consider various venues that depend on the stage of your company. You might look into angel investments or non-dilutive government grants um, or VC investments or a combination of. Um, if you're looking at the U.S., for example, look into non-dilutive funding 
Um, for example, BARDA, which is the Bio-Advanced Research and Development Authority, part of uh, Health and Human Services of our federal government, is looking for solutions in COVID right now that's available with funds to companies outside of the United States. So that's one of the examples how you can look for government grants, even if you're not a U.S. Uh, company. Um, you want to make sure that your pitch is honed to that country's pitch practices. Um, as we know, investors are pretty conservative, and they like to hear pitch that is uh, sort of in their own style of that country. I know that U.S. have a very specific um, sort of a, a, a way for companies to pitch and uh, look for partners that can train you in that pitch style. Um, and finally, understand all the um, financial uh, lingo, right? What is safe? What is convertible notes? Uh, what are the differences between the two? What's preferred stock? So before you pitch, please know all your um, sort of um, basics um, when you talk to investors. Um, Field-specific considerations are really important. For example, if you're a healthcare company, you want not only to understand the regulatory like FDA, or if you're an energy company, EPA, or FCC for fintech, but you want to understand uh, the um, local specifics of your field. For example, for healthcare, it's very important to understand how U.S. healthcare works what are the reimbursement strategies that you should put in place even before you talk to investors? Um, how are you going to deal with uh, procurement with hospitals or patients? The same goes for other fields. For example, in fintech, you need to understand procurement uh, strategies when you're talking to banks or other financial institutions. So diving deep and understanding that and putting that strategy in place before you open an office becomes crucial. Um, I always suggest to look for key opinion leaders in the country where you're planning to expand and maybe adding those key opinion le leaders to your advisory board. That becomes uh, sort of, that, that adds credibility to your company when you're talking to potential customers or investors. So these are all um, things to consider. Um, so as I said, looking into things that you don't know or uncovering those unknowns becoming a very important part of your roadmap. So my suggestion will be to seek um, either specific programs like a global soft lending program where um, they can help you uncover all of those or seek partners that have a vast ecosystem behind them. Um, even, even if it's a, a solo consultant, make sure that they have other partners to refer you to legal, um, IP, uh, tax, um, operationally, um, culturally, we didn't even touch on that, but cultural considerations are very important because the style of um, even uh, selling the product varies from country to country. Your marketing materials obviously have to be localized by an expert. Um, so when you're looking for help, um, I would suggest looking into the entire ecosystem and make sure that it supports you. Look into um, economic development agencies of that country and ask their help. It usually comes free and uh, they are very well connected. Um, look at economic development agencies of your country that is uh, helping people to expand um, internationally. That's also a great help usually. Um, and so when you hire consultants or partners, um, just think, think through how one person cannot know all the fields. And so that becomes really important, the connectivity, um, sort of the tissue behind that, that uh, company or person becomes really important when you consider hiring them. Um, and again, look for well-established ecosystems with connections to industry, to academia, to um, other partners that you might consider. So that all becomes really important. So, you know, just having one good conversation at the trade show is not enough for you to consider that locale. Look at the larger picture and dive uh, deeper when you're putting together the plan for expansion. Um, 
again, my name is Karina Sotnik. I'm really happy to be of help um, and happy to answer any questions. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or Skype or my email. And um, also we have a, a website that you can learn about our programs, including the Global Soft Lending Program at the University City Science Center. And um, it was my pleasure to be working with you today. Thank you so much.